Hello everybody, my name is Battle Z, and this is going to be a guide on how to play Domination. I'm currently sitting around the top 100 in ladder, and I have done pretty much since release. So, let's jump into it. So, as we can see here, we have three points in which you have to capture. If you capture two points, uh, two objectives, you will win on points. The main factor to remember is you have supplies, which effectively uh, equates to currency to buy specific units, as you can see in the reinforcement points. And all maps will have three reinforcing points and three vanguard points. You can see I have three vanguard units in which I can deploy in each direction. Let's say you're trying to put pressure onto point three. It'd be more effective to deploy your units here so they don't have to move as long. Whereas obviously going to point two, deploying a vanguard here to run them down, and then deploying here to run down these directions as well. And obviously putting pressure onto point one, this vanguard deployment here is effective, along with this reinforcement point here. The best tip I can give anybody that plays this game is check what your opponent has. They've got two noblers, two iron blasters, and scrag, which equates to roughly around 4,800 in cost. You start with 7,200, and they have two slots left, which means they have to have gorges because I cannot see them. So now it sets me up knowing that I have to protect against gorges. And you can see top left, we can see how many troops they have. And um, now it pretty much changes up how I play my starting army. I need to protect my backline units. I purposely used this replay because I was greeting for just basically gold damage. And I have let my backline units um, effectively be get shambled. You know, gorges are in the backline now and my cannons are no longer going to be useful. And this is the fundamentals. If I took into, you know, into consideration what they had to begin with, this would never have happened. I'd have had a closer formation and these cannons would have been perfectly fine, continuously shooting, gaining value. This is why it's so important to take into consideration what you're going to be fighting against. So I'm going to quickly talk about how to build your army compositions. And, you know, there is no such thing as one shoe fits all. A way you build your army, you've got to be mindful about what you're going to fight against. What we see right now is a Cathay build in which I would say would perform against Ogres. Ogres have a lot of large targets. The only thing that isn't large is the Noblers. So you can see that we've built a double cannon which would counter the Iron Blaster and also Mirror Mirror, uh, excuse me, Mirror Mirror on the wall. Missile Mirror would counter Iron Blasters. If you overcast this, uh, Iron Blasters can two-shot themselves. And you can see within the reinforcing army, Always be mindful of what they might spawn. Not necessarily what they have spawned, but what they might spawn. So, I have a mage with final transmutation, which would deal with a lot of the heavy hitters, like the iron guts and things like that. Also, the celestial dragon guard would do the same thing. Same with the spearman variant, excuse me, the halberd variant. They would do a very good job at taking down heavily armored ogres. Terracotta sentinel would do very good into ogres that have very low armor piercing. And the peasant archers would do really good into the low armored ogres, and there's a lot of them. Uh, and then obviously jade lancers would there to support um, any form of hammer and anvil action that goes on. And the peasant horsemen would be very good at flanking, getting capture weights, and uh, you know running rampant in vanguard deployment. So you've always got to remember, what am I fighting? Okay, I'm going, I'm going against you know like I said ogres. Build accordingly to how you think they may deploy. But always remember, in your reinforcing army, have options that you can summon in and wait for to actually counter. If your main army is absolutely terrible against your opponent, you do not have to fight them at the beginning. It's three minutes until the points open, and you can always wait until you have an option. Let's say I no longer have cannons. For whatever reason, I didn't bring cannons. And my army composition looks something similar like this. I can no longer attack and do well against the Iron Blasters, unless I get lucky with the Missile Mirror. So, what do I need to do? I need to wait until I can get a Grand Cannon out onto the battlefield, otherwise I have no pressure against that. This, uh, this is called, it's sort of like, it's similar with everything else. Like, imagine I'm going against Slanesh. Slanesh have very low armor. I don't need to have heavily armor piercing units. So, you know, a Peasant Long Spearman would do just as well as a Jade Warrior Halberd would do, generally speaking, because they would have better uh, melee attack in this situation, uh, even Chevron, and they're cheaper. You don't need the armor because they're quite armor piercing themselves. And, you know, be mindful what you might fight and uh, always keep them, you know, into consideration what would do well and what answer you have going against it. This section is going to cover uh, finding value through your units. So there's a multiple ways of, uh, of getting value from units. You know, one uh, way of getting value is obviously having capture weight. So noblers for the, for the ogres, for example. Uh, another one is holding back resources 
uh, with a very like kind of low amount of units or low amount of cost. Say, for example, if I used a singular gorger costing 1,100, it should be increased, but still. Uh, and I was holding back, let's say, a soul grinder um, or a keeper of secrets. You know, that has a lot more value uh, from cost, meaning the cost differential I can use on other parts of the map and put pressure in multiple ways. So let's get a real time example. So here's an example of my opponent doing a fantastic job of using very little and actually holding back units here. So you can see these cost 2,200, these gorges. This is a summon Chaos Fury, as you can see by the unbinding. And this is the health, uh, health Riders. I believe this is 700. So you can see effectively 700 is holding back almost three. Yeah, three units, basically four. So this is a really bad play by me, um, keeping units like this uh, stuck. So on other parts of the map, I'm effectively losing because I have 4,000 gold investment doing basically nothing. And so this is one of the main factors to consider when playing Domination, is ensuring that you can kind of leverage and use the strength of your armies in the right places and ensure that they're fighting against um, units that they have advantages against. So for example, Gorges are really, really good at murdering basically anything because they're OP. But they're very good, especially into inventory. Obviously, a lot of Solnesh's early and cheap units are large for the cavalry and the Soul Grinder. But you can quickly see that the Soul Grinder actually bogs up all of these gorges. I somehow managed to win because of the fact that I went exceptionally wide. Um, and obviously, Manito Pistols are really fantastic at holding the line with the, the Iron Breakers there. But you can see that I'm trying to hold, and this is the reason why Ogres are uh, very strong currently in the meta. They pretty much have everything. You know, you can go wide with noblers. You can also have very potent units to hold the line. Uh, but you can see here, this singular soul grinder is holding up Scrag and four soul, uh, gorges. This is a mas massive, massive mistake on my end. You know, this is 4,000 plus gold being held up by like 2,000 odd. And so, and I'm, you know, I'm taking damage to Scrag as well. Um, it is so important to recognize, you know, when your units are, you know, I, could, I only need one of these. I only need one in Scrag. Three of them can do something. I could then go beat these guys up, or I could actually have the pushing power on three, or I could even focus on trying to push, you know, push them back to their spawn if needed. Although I am currently winning, this is, and I did, I actually did win this game, but you've got to keep in mind, you know, where you can squeeze out advantages. What is a unit good into? And by holding, by, you know, by holding units away, my opponent had a chance to get back in this game because of the fact, like I said, they're holding with just a soul grinder well over 5,000 value. And they're holding the line, keeping them here for a very long time. This is devastating for the tempo because it's all about tempo. It's capture the hill. You want to get onto things as soon as possible. And so this is kind of what I was meaning by gaining value from units without doing damage. This is holding units back, allowing advantages on other parts of the map. So here you can see that I have a very bad army going into uh, my opposition's army. But as we know, this is an objective game. It's not about killing things. You need 5,000 points to win. So um, I'm using the terrain here because I have no way of countering the Iron Blaster in front of me. So instead of fighting in the middle, taking loads of free damage, I, you know, instead I move effectively to an area where there is no line of sight uh, for my opposition. Um, in this scenario, it's important to remember that if you are currently outmatched, you need to make sure to get yourself in a position where you can actually start spawning things to invoke uh, pressure. Just spawning blue horrors here will do nothing because they'll just shoot them and get easy value. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to push forward and showcase what the best thing is to do here. One thing I've managed to do very uh, successfully is put a lot of pressure onto the Iron Blaster. And as you can see, this Iron Blaster got near enough next to no value for, yeah, 111 value. And it's pretty much being countered uh, by using the Metal Magic of Final Transmutation, but also using the Portal Grith and these Chaos Furies are doing a really good job at putting pressure. If a unit is currently routing, you can uh, basically stick something on it, and no matter what the leadership is, as long as you're, something is attacking it, it will never come back in. You can see we're down quite a considerable amount, but the best thing you can do is pull up your resources to spawn a lot of things in at once, you know? Instead of just waiting for loads of things to come in uh, and just spawning things one at once, you're not really going to do much there. But I've done a counterattack over on this side using my spawns of Zinch because they're going to be really good coming into here. Using also the Screamers of Zinch because I'm going to basically murder their cavalry nice and easy. 
Um, in this scenario, me uh, putting a lot of wide pressure, so effectively what I mean by going wide is using a lot of inventory, uh, I'm effectively just trying to push them off the point to capture this. You can see that they are definitely decimating me upon gold value, but we're going to keep up pressure onto this left flank towards point three. And now I can start getting tempo back because they're shooting the, the Iron Blast is shooting my mage. I'm just making sure to run around and do nothing. But now I'm setting up in the middle, going wide, and then basically getting a nice um, setup so I can start shooting the gorges and get pressure on this side. At this current stage, I'm down to between 3,000 and 4,000 gold value. Uh, but I'm lucky that I have managed to catch out two gorges and their Mormfan cavalry with just the spawn. So the main thing I need to do right now is spawn things onto the left flank Put pressure and take capture point three let's jump ahead so this is exactly what i start doing later on now that the timing is perfect they've got a lot of pressure um in the middle so i can start deploying really wide units on this side but also since they have very you know very very weakened units here i can send in my furies to start dealing pressure onto the gorges because gorges don't have a lot of armor so now it's going to be uh, seal team six get in there and I want to put pressure onto these guys. And then I just need something for capping weight, which is the Blue Horrors. And I'm, as long as I'm doing a good job of holding the line here, because since they don't have any Noblers or a lot of Noblers, the capping weight for me is going to be significantly in my favor on that side. And obviously, we've still got point one nice and secure. Um, but here is one of the most important things for me to do. I lose without a triple cap. That's the fundamentals of this. I need the triple cap because I got so far behind for, because of my um, opening build of the two soul grinders. I basically sacrificed them, sent them in, and they did nothing. And you're, you can also see this is the Iron Blaster come back. I believe this was spawned once again, and you can see it's only got 248 value. We've done a fantastic job of shutting down the Iron Blaster using Furies, using spawns, using the uh, Screamers. Um, but now we're in a situation where we can start putting pressure on point three. And this is the main, main important factor. Although I am down in gold by a considerable amount, my army composition in comparison to his in the later stage is significantly better because I have capping weight, whereas he does not. Uh, but let's jump ahead again. So I managed to uh, kill the Gorgers by basically using the Furies and firing into them. But I've done something that's uh, a good move here. I've basically sent my Screamings in. Since flying units do not have capping weight, I sent them straight into these Ogre Bulls to stop them getting capping weight onto the point three. But you can see it is deathly close. They are so close to winning. They are honestly inches away from winning. So I need to make sure to keep point two, keep point one. So I'm going to move my units up here to stop anything coming forward. And then same situation over here. I'm so close to getting point three. And I need to get it as soon as possible to stop them from winning here. Uh, and you can see that all I'm going to do is get capture weight on point three again. Hold them back here. And all I've got to do is hold the line. And I only just cap it. They are 100 points away, and all I'm needing to do now is just play the objectives. They did capture something, but we managed to take the win. This is the importance of understanding. Gold value is good, but understanding if you can hold things back with uh, certain units, use your unit counters, you can still win even if you're behind greatly on gold. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed it. My name is BattleZ, and I do stream on Twitch, so do check me out if you've got any questions about this specific guide. I hope you have a wonderful day, morning, evening wherever you're in the world. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye for now.